I'm here at a top secret location ahead of the 2019 edition of Paris-Roubaix and I have what I think is the most exciting pro bike I've ever seen. Now, the reason why I'm so excited is because this is the bike of Peter Sagan, which is, well, normally very exciting. But in addition to that, it's a brand new specialized Roubaix. And this is the first time I've seen it. I didn't even know this thing was coming out. I mean, it's only a couple of years ago that the original Roubaix was launched. And normally product cycles are a bit longer than that. But wow, look at it. So first up, I'm gonna go through what I can see to be the big differences between this, the new Roubaix, and the previous Roubaix. And then I'll talk about some of the small things that make this bike unique to Peter Sagan. First up, we have the Future Shock. Now, this was introduced on the last Roubaix model, and it's essentially some suspension here just above the head tube that makes it more comfortable when you're riding over rough surfaces like the Parve. However, they've modified it, it now, has a lockout on the top so you can lock off the suspension when you're riding on tarmac and keeping it smooth so you have no travel and then you can flip it just by twisting that like that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? The next big change over the previous Roubaix is the tube profile shapes as well. So these are much more like the tubes that are found on the brand new specialized tarmac. They've been optimized to be more aerodynamic. So we can see that in the down tube here, in the seat tube, which has got like a D-shaped flat back section, and also the seat post as well, which is D-shaped. It actually looks like it's the same seat post as found in the tarmac. Now a D-shaped post is something that we see on a lot of BMC bikes and also giant bikes as well. And it has a couple of advantages. It's a bit more aerodynamic, but also being flat at the back enables it to deflect more, something which is crucial for adding extra comfort in a race like Paris-Roubaix. While I'm on the subject of the seat post, it also has a revised uh, junction into the frame as well. This is a completely different design to the previous Roubaix. So we have this polymer sort of cap that you can lift off there. And then from there, you can see that there's loads of, there's a big gap there. That's deliberate to allow the seat post to have a bit of travel inside the frame and deflect more, crucially to try and give more comfort, which is important for a race like Paris-Roubaix. Another new detail is the junction box is now really neatly fitted into the down tube here, something we've seen on a lot of new bikes, rather than it previously uh, being rather scruffily located in a sort of underslung fashion under the stem. Nice. So those are the main differences uh, between the new Roubaix and the old Roubaix, but this is Sagan's bike, so what's special about it in that regard? What makes it unique to him? Well, he has a special paint job, and that's something we're used to seeing with Peter Sagan. It's this beautiful kind of metallic, iridescent green paint uh, that really changes color in the light, depending on how you look at it. It is amazing, and there's a few little sort of metallic Peter Sagan logos, there's one there, and a nice little name logo there that identify it as Sagan's. Uh, there's also three little bands at the back here on the chainstay. These little metallic bands that notify his, well, signify his three world champs win. So you've got Richmond, Doha and Bergen. That's very classy. But this is a, a very understated paint job for Peter Sagan. We're normally used to seeing much more flamboyant designs uh, for him over the years. But uh, I really like it. Being Sagan's Roubaix bike, there are a few key equipment changes on here that are different from any other bike that he'd use the rest of the season. So some things are the same, like the fact that he's using Jura Ace Di2 throughout. That's the same on all of his bikes, but the chain set is different. So instead of his normal 5339, He's got a 53-44 at the back there. Roubaix is uh, a very flat race, and so a lot of the riders prefer having that closer ratio of a 53 to a 44. At the back, we've got an 11-28 cassette, and you'll also notice that there are ceramic speed uh, bearings fitted throughout. The wheels are Roval 50 millimeter uh, tubulars and paired with those is 30 millimeter specialized S-Works turbo cotton tires. These are really thick indeed, really wide. Uh, and I'm told that the pressure that he's gonna be running in those is anywhere between four and a half and six bar, but that depends on the day, whether it's wet or dry. Interestingly too, the mechanics tell me that because of the compliance offered by the Future Shock, they're actually able to run slightly higher pressure in the tires if they want to as well. 
Sagan's saddle of choice is a specialised Roman Evo. And quite interesting, he's got a layback seat post here, and also the saddle is slammed right back on the rail, something which I'd imagine gives quite a lot of compliance because there's a bit more leverage on the saddle. On the chain set, you'll notice that there's a specialised power meter. This is a dual sided meter, there's a pod on the non-drive side crank as well. And the crank arms are 172.5 millimetres long. Same as me. <laughs> However, not the same as me are his pedals. I use Jorace pedals as well, but Sagan has the ones with the wider, well, longer four millimetre uh, axle, which gives a bit more Q factor. This sort of makes sense, because when you see him pedaling, his legs do look like they're a bit further apart naturally. So. That's quite interesting. Onto the cockpit now, and I find this really interesting. The first thing that kind of dominates the eye is how long his stem is. That's 140 millimetres long, and it's a, an S-work stem. And out the front of that, we've got a really neat out front mount for his Wahoo bolt. I really like that. That's very tidy. Nice. And then that's paired with a Pro Vibe 42 centimetre bar. Interestingly, it's a round bar. So again, has often been using an aero bar, an aero cockpit for this season, but for Roubaix, he's gone for a round bar, which offers a bit more compliance, and it's also a bit more comfortable when you're holding it on the tops as well. But one of the most interesting things is sort of the lack of modifications for me in this cockpit. At Roubaix, we see a lot of weird and wacky tech, and often you see extra shifters, extra brake levers, double wrap bar tape, but this is, well, it's pretty simple. I, I kind of like that, but I do like his bar tape though. This is the Supercaz bar tape, and it does feels very tacky. Nice. In case you're wondering what size bike Peter Zagan rides, well, it's a 56, which is also the same as me. I'm basically Peter Sagan, aren't I? <laughs> well, let's do a free up sound check. Smooth. It's getting louder. Another difference from the previous Roubaix that I've spotted is the lack of through axle lever on the front and the back. Instead, it's similar to what we see on other bikes where the lever is actually removable. And what this does is create a much cleaner front end, if you look. There's no lever sticking out, which makes the bike slightly more aerodynamic. Some people reckon that's worth a watt or two, so significant. And to remove the wheels or change the wheels, the mechanics actually have a special sort of pit gun, like you'd see in Formula One. I've just got the mechanics to weigh Sagan's bike as it is in full race build and it hits the scales at 7.91 kilograms. So not a featherweight, lightweight climbing bike, but that isn't what you want for Roubaix. You want a bike that's robust and durable and comfortable and can take on the cobbles. And that is hopefully what this is. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the GCN channel as it helps us make more videos in the future. But let us know in the comments down below what you think of this awesome new bike. I love it. I think it looks amazing. And uh, I wonder if it'll win on Sunday. Anyway, for more Paris-Roubaix content, you can click on Sags's 44 tooth inner chain ring.